Hello everyone, welcome to No Frontiers. My name is Luca and this is episode two of Netflix's One Piece live action. And we're reacting to episode two, which is called The Man in the Straw Hat. Now, in case you didn't see the first episode where we reacted to episode number one, Romance Dawn, then I will leave that down in the description below. Okay, so right away at the start of the episode, we see that Luffy is actually training how to use his gum gum powers. Now, that's really important, I think, for this show because Devil Fruits are extremely overpowered, but we know that they have the drawback. You can't swim. You can't actually survive. If you're immersed in water, you lose all your power. But especially with the Devil Fruits, even though they're so OP, you have to actually train your skills so you learn how to use them. So that's very important and I like that they're showing even young Luffy right now. He's trying to master how to do his gum gum pistol, which is kind of his, his main attack move. And even at the beginning, he doesn't even know how to land it. He's destroying chairs. Okay, so jumping ahead to the next scene, we've got Nami who is in the process of trying to break open the safe. She needs quiet so she can hear the ticks in the lock. And then you have Luffy, who on the other hand is just really bothering her. Won't leave her alone. He's very, very restless. He's hanging upside down from the mast. That's really in line with Luffy's character. A big difference though between like Inyaki Godoy's portrayal is he's much more mischievous where the original Luffy would be a lot more... Mm, he's not as mischievous. I mean, he is a troublemaker, but he's more let's say carefree, innocent. He's almost like a child, really just kind of bouncing around doing whatever. So um, that, that is very funny though. They have some nice interaction between both of them. So once the safe has been cracked and they open it up, they pull out the map of the Grand Line, but you notice actually very briefly that you see Kudo's wanted poster. Now Kudo's a character that we'll find out about soon. Yeah, nice little bit of foreshadowing. I'm gonna go ahead and assume we'll see him in the next episode. So what I like about this opening scene is some very important things are established. Number one, for example, Luffy, his hat is incredibly important to him. And of course, at this point in the episode, you don't know why, but we know that that hat is very, very dear and he cannot lose it. So we know that. We see that from when Nami throws it. Number two, he loves the bow of the ship. We'll see a lot more of that later on. Three, well, Zoro loves sleeping. That's something also that's a, that's a very common trend in One Piece. And then four, I would say the importance of the map. So the map is something that's introduced into the live action, but the map of the Grand Line and understanding how it actually works is actually quite important to really understanding why the One Piece crew is doing what they're doing, why they're going to specific locations. If you really want to enjoy the story, understanding where they're going, it's actually quite important. So despite being pirates, they're easily captured by Buggy. Typical Luffy. Our first real full scene with Buggy is really, really good. I was a little bit concerned when I saw this tent. I thought the circus tent was going to randomly be on his ship, which is not the case. But it turns out it's actually in the destroyed town. Um, and then you have all the townsfolk which have been chained and they're in captivity. And they're actually forced to applaud for his show as he's rehearsing. And that entrance when he comes in, he says, no, 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 no. That was really, really, really good. Um, I absolutely love that. I think that was a great idea. So if you have watched my episode one reaction, then you'll know I mentioned that for me, what's very important is how they reimagine One Piece. It's, it's, it's almost impossible to do a live action of an anime like One Piece. It's so vast, it's so grand, things are so exaggerated that how do you realistically do it without making it bad? You don't have unlimited budget, even though their budget was very high. So a big part of it is actually just reimagining scenes. How do you reimagine the story, but stay true to his roots? So I really, really like that they reimagined kind of this buggy circus tent, set it up in the destroyed town. That was really, really nice that they leaned into it because Buggy's crew is actually full of freaks, but like circus performers with deadly skills, they're all dressed up. So that was really great, especially just so uncomfortable seeing all those citizens. It shows that kind of sadistic side of Buggy. These citizens who are kind of forced to laugh, but you can see how painful it was. Yeah, that was really, really good. and It was really, really effective. And then very importantly, right off the bat, same as in the anime, same as the original story, they establish how sensitive Buggy is about his nose. And what's crazy is they actually CGI'd it, so it's actually like his nose. It looks like a clown nose, but when you look closely, it's literally his nose. So you can see how sensitive he is about it when Luffy says, I'm sure everyone in the East Blow knows who you are. He says, what? And everyone gasps, because Luffy said, knows who you are, not knows. <laughs> yeah, that was really hilarious. So then we go back to Morgan's Marine Base and you have a scene with Garp and Morgan. So once again, we've got Garp. Uh, if you know what the where the story goes, especially with Garp, then you would also probably be a little bit surprised and confused why he's considering some other characters in the show, why he's 
Scottish? Ah, it's a little bit weird. I'm watching Garp and I feel like he... I mean, you could put like Pierce Brosnan in. He has to be a bit more rough. He should be more rough. But anyways, I'll give Garp time. Yeah, anyways, that scene, yeah, with Garp and Morgan, mm, not the biggest fan of it. Especially just because, especially Morgan is quite underwhelming. So then we jump back into Buggy's tent and Luffy's being stretched. And he's kind of screaming in pain while faking it. And then he says, I can do this all day. And that kind of like temporarily ruined the immersion for me because I thought, oh, Captain America. But anyways, then we have one of the coolest moments of the episode where Buggy actually flexes. I was looking between the different chop chop parts of his body that were separated and pulled apart and then put back together. It looked really, really good. And then jumping forward again to the next scene, we see Morgan's Den Den Mushi, his snail telephone. And that I also really, really loved. I don't remember. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, if you've watched the anime, if you've read the manga, did they ever feed the Den Den Mushi, the snail telephones? Did they ever feed those? Were they feeding them lettuce or cabbage, whatever it was? That was really, really cute. But I just, yeah, I don't remember it, but that was a great scene, especially because he has the, um, the, the kind of jaw mask. Um, the same one that Morgan has, so you know that's his snail telephone. That was really also a fantastic touch. All right, so after that we have a, a very interesting scene which they've created for the live action, which is between Garp and Kobe. Now Garp suspects Kobe, who might still be a pirate. I mean, after all, Kobe arrived there with Luffy at the same time at that marine base. And so because other people saw them, Garp suspects that maybe Kobe is like an undercover pirate or something trying to infiltrate the Marines. And so he questions him. Now I can understand why they've created this scene. There's so much information and so many plot lines which you have to establish early on when you're limited with the amount of episodes you can do. So I understand why they create the scenes. I don't have any problem with it. Just the one thing is, especially there's... A, they missed out on a really nice moment between Luffy and Kobe where Luffy really shows how great of a guy is by, by actually like punching and kind of beating up Kobe. So what actually happens is, if that's confusing to you, is in the anime, when they arrive at this town and they're at a bar, there's um, a bunch of Marines who see that Luffy and Kobe are together. Now, Kobe hasn't tried to join the Marines at that point, but he always really wanted to. But he's still with Luffy because, I mean, Luffy saved him from Alvida. At that time, when the Marines are doubting that Kobe is not a pirate, Luffy actually goes and kind of beats him up and punches him until Zoro pulls him back. And so that is actually confirmation that Kobe in front of the Marines that he's not actually part of the pirate crew. And that actually allows him to initially enlist into the Marines. And unfortunately in live action, we weren't able to get that scene. So instead of that scene, Kobe just tells Garp, well, every pirate should be brought to justice or whatever, which, which is different from the anime. But at the same time, that kind of sentiment, if you know what happens later on, if you know about Garp's story, then that was actually a pretty nice alternative because it's really tied into kind of the, the, the core members of One Piece. Then once again, Mountain Bandit is back, but he's probably not gonna be around for long because he threatens Luffy. And then Shanks comes and says a very important line. He says, you can spill a drink on me and I'll let it slide, but don't you ever threaten my friends. And that's very important in One Piece. That line that Luffy hears, that's incredibly important. Of course, we know it is because later on he will repeat it to Buggy. Yeah, so after this moment, I started to get this very tingly feeling in my body. It doesn't matter how long it's been since you watched One Piece or read it, there are iconic moments. And I talked about this in episode one is, my expectation is that iconic moments in One Piece will be shown. I want them to be shown almost the exact same as they are in the anime. So now we have one of the iconic moments in early One Piece where Luffy is being threatened by the mountain bandit, his henchmen are there, but also Shanks comes with his pirate crew. And at that time, one of the Mountain Bandit's crewmen gets basically executed. I actually don't know what's his name. The, the, the guy, he's always wearing green. He's got the, the goggles. He's got a piece of meat in one hand and a pistol in the other. Uh, they, they did that very well in the live action. But the way he executes, executes the crewmate when Shanks points, and it's actually him who shot from behind. In the anime, what's really great is he actually is standing next to him, literally with the gun at his head, and just shoots him. And so, that since that's such a like a startling moment, I really wish that they just recreated that exactly the same way. But I did feel that they redeemed that missed opportunity with Yasop's badass introduction when he shot and ricocheted the bullet. That was so cool. So skipping past Luffy being in the tank and Buggy's uh, tank, 
Um, I, I did like the fact that they're kind of contrasting that with young Luffy being in the ocean. But basically, he ends up in the ocean. I, I'm pretty sure the Mountain Bandit actually dropped him in the anime in the ocean. But in this case, it's that giant Sea King, which looked really cool when we got that overhead kind of drone view from above. And so then the Mountain Bandit is eaten. And then as Luffy is sinking and drowning, Shanks pulls him out. Now... It was really well done. It was really well done. It wasn't exactly as I hoped. It wasn't very clear how Shanks lost his arm, but I thought the Sea King was pretty good CGI. It, it didn't look too unrealistic. I like the use of Shanks' power. That was a really nice moment, and Shanks' actor is growing on me for sure. <laughs> and then next up we have Buggy saying, Surprise, <laughs> And then we have a basically a Buggy body part tornado which was really cool. And then we also saw, ah, an iconic attack move from Luffy, which was the Gum Gum Bazooka. That was really great. Yep. And then final scene, of course, we got classic Nami. She's hiding something. There's a lot we don't know about her. We haven't learned anything about her story. We don't know what her motivations are. We know that she's got a surface Nami and then the real Nami and what her agenda is still remains to be discovered. So that was a good cliffhanger and I look forward to episode three. So if you enjoyed this live reaction of episode two, The Man in the Straw Hat, then stick around because I'm going to soon be watching episode number three and giving you my direct reaction immediately after that. So if you have any comments, critiques, criticisms, if you enjoyed the content, let me know down in the description below. Subscribe so you don't miss the episode and I'll see you soon right here on No Frontiers.